The story you're about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts about historical characters, events, or locations. Please sit back and listen as I narrate this story to you. Paul Donald Kemp Jr., a 35-year-old American advertising executive from New York, vanished in a remote part of Wyoming on November 16, 1982, under mysterious circumstances. Kemp had been in a car accident five years before his disappearance, which had left him disabled. During his recovery, he developed a fixation with Abraham Lincoln, a subject he had been interested in since childhood and decided to write a book about Lincoln's assassination. Kemp decided to leave his old job after he recovered and instead focused his efforts on writing a book about President Abraham Lincoln's assassination. He'd been researching it for months and had amassed a massive amount of paperwork and notes from which he planned to write the book. In September 1982, he sold nearly everything he owned and moved to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He intended to complete the book there, but he never made it. Don showed up at a Western Museum in Cayenne on November 15. He walked through the galleries for two hours without speaking to a single person. He apparently left his attache case behind. His traveler's checks, diaries, and driving glasses were all in there. He called the museum a few hours after leaving and inquired about his case. They told him it was there and he promised to come back and get it. He never returned and he was never seen again. At 10 a.m. on November 16, patrolman Randy Teeters discovered Don's abandoned SUV idling on an Interstate 80 on-ramp 40 miles from any town, his clothes thrown across the highway. It was there since 7.30 a.m. The engine was still running, the doors were open, and the radio was turned on. Food was left inside, including a fresh container of orange juice, beef jerky, and chocolates. In the blowing snow, a single set of tracks was left that ventured north of the van. Because of this, as well as the number of belongings in the car, police assumed he was alone when he exited his vehicle. They also suspected that he had wandered off due to mental or physical issues. A search team followed the tracks until the path was obliterated by snow, but several items belonging to camp were discovered. An orange teapot was discovered along the footprint trail camp had left, three socks were discovered in an abandoned barn, and a cache of items Clothing, sunflower seeds, and a laundry bag were discovered days after Kemp's disappearance hidden in a haystack. Tracks in the snow led the searchers to a barn six miles away on the second day of the search. They discovered a pile of sticks inside, arranged as if someone had attempted to start a fire. They also discovered three pairs of Don socks. Mary was convinced that they had been planted there. Surprisingly, only one set of tracks led to the barn. Searchers assumed Don followed his own footsteps from the barn. While a single engine plane was used to survey the area for camp and several law enforcement officers searched on foot, no trace of the missing man was found. A blizzard descended on the area three days after Don's disappearance, making it impossible to continue the search. I don't think it's out there, Deputy Sheriff Rod Johnson, who had headed the search, said. If he was, I would have found him. Despite an offer from a neighboring county to assist them, the police refused to conduct any additional air searches. The family asked the sheriff in charge of the investigation if search dogs could be used. The sheriff said no. The family quickly discovered that search dogs were available in another police district. Don's mother became convinced Kemp had been abducted due to the lack of a body. Don was seen on two occasions in Casper, Wyoming, five months after he went missing. A witness first saw him at a traveling exhibit of Abraham Lincoln memorabilia. In the second, he was spotted at a bar by a bartender who recognized him and remembered serving him. Around the same time as these sightings, Don's friend, Judith, returned home from vacation to find several voicemail messages from him. Kemp had known Judith A. Aiello for 10 years when she received two phone calls on February 27, 1983, two more on April 5, and a final call on April 10. The caller left two messages on Aiello's answering machine and while no name was left, Aiello was certain the voice was Kemp's. Her phone number was unlisted, so she could not be called without someone already knowing her number. Aiello had been traveling extensively at the time and was unaware Kemp had gone missing. The caller provided a phone number in a strained, urgent voice and said, 
I would like to speak with you again in a very brief message and that was very precise and fast. I yellow dialed the phone number. A man responded. I yellow inquired as to whether Don Kemp was present, to which the voice responded yes, before quickly correcting himself to no. Before the man said yeah and hung up, Aiello left a message with the voice saying she had returned Kemp's call. Judith is convinced that the caller knows the truth about what happened to Don. The calls were traced to a trailer in Casper, Wyoming, 180 miles from Don's disappearance. The man who lived in the house, Mark Dennis, told reporters, Kemp's family, and law enforcement that he had no idea who Don Kemp was or who had made the phone calls to his friend. Mary believes the man was responsible for Don's death. She attempted to contact him several times. When he responded, he continued to deny knowing anything about Don. Dennis sought out the services of a lawyer, then moved 300 miles away by August 1983, partly to avoid constant phone calls from Mary Camp and questioning from local sheriffs. Dennis resembled Camp so much that sheriffs were perplexed when they first contacted him about the phone calls. Dennis recognized the resemblance when shown a photograph of Camp. The man was cooperative, according to the investigators, and they do not believe he had any knowledge of the case. The police informed Kemp's family that there was insufficient evidence to warrant a search of the man's home. Although they believe Don died in the blizzard, Mary believes he was murdered in Casper. On October 4, 1985, hunters discovered the skeletal remains of a man later identified as Don Kemp. The remains were discovered four miles away from Kemp's abandoned van. Kemp is thought to have died from exposure after becoming lost in a snowstorm in the days following his disappearance. Kemp's body had not attracted any natural predators and no animals or vultures had been drawn to his decomposing body. There was no way his body could have been covered in snow for four years. The snow would have melted and it hadn't been snowing the night he vanished. Kemp's remains were offered to be examined by the Smithsonian Institute in order to determine a proper cause of death. The head of anthropology examined the body and estimated that Kemp had been dead for no more than one to two years. The body was in near-perfect condition and showed no signs of being disturbed by animals. The autopsy did reveal a small hole drilled in Don's skull, but the doctors on hand were unable to determine what caused it. Attempts to replicate the puncture were unsuccessful. The family was curious how the Institute had learned about Kemp's case, which had not been widely publicized. Mary Kemp expressed her concerns about her son's death, saying she was a little skeptical of the information she had received. Others questioned the discovery, citing Kemp's proximity to his van, the fact that he was discovered in an open area, and Deputy Sheriff Rod Johnson's claim that he would have found Kemp alive or dead if he had been in the area. However, the strangeness in this case was far from over. Kemp's belongings were stolen on several occasions in the years following his death. Don's mother asked one of his friends in 1983 if he would go to Wyoming and return her son's car. The friend flew to claim the car and then began the drive back to Maryland. When he parked his car overnight in a motel, it was broken into. Then, while the vehicle was parked at an airport, another break-in occurred, this time stealing papers related to his Lincoln research. Later, Don's mother's storage unit was broken into and more of his belongings were stolen. The family gave the rest of his Civil War and Lincoln probing paperwork to a historian. The man died in a motorcycle accident shortly after. Another package of Lincoln research was sent to Frank Carrington, who also died in a house fire only weeks after receiving Kemp's information. Kathy Doby, Don's sister, is still convinced that her brother discovered something significant during the endless hours he spent researching Lincoln's death. He'd said as much without going into specifics about what he'd discovered. She discovered that the family of Dr. Samuel Mudd, the infamous doctor who helped John Wilkes Booth after he broke his leg, leaping from the president's theater balcony, had contacted Don and received paperwork that they hoped would help exonerate their long-dead relative. Mary Camp died in 2014 at the age of 86. The circumstances surrounding her son's death are still unknown. Hey everyone! I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took time out of your day to listen to my narration. This is Nikki of Twisted Mind, and I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Salamat.